today. From SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. Chris Bosch, it's the AFC Divisional Round Playoffs on EA Sports. Harris Campbell now on the return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. Harris Campbell on the return. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. Leading the charge will be their quarterback. Always fun to watch, Deshaun Watson. And he and his team, they were the beneficiaries of a first-round buy earned by a tremendous regular season. He'd been a little bit nicked up, so he could use the rest. And I'm sure his teammates felt the exact same way. But now to be interesting to watch their first few drives in this one. Because sometimes getting the rest is great, but sometimes you accumulate a little bit of rust as well. Maybe they come out flat and they can't afford that in the postseason. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. A gain of a yard brings up third and five. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the gun, here's Watson. Through the contact, it's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure: when you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle is going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So now here come the Patriots to take over on offense. And they'll be piloted by their veteran quarterback standing six foot four. It's Ryan Tannehill. Any more that did his part in the wild card win with three touchdown passes. Now, he's going to get a bigger test here in round two. But his unit is in rhythm, and they're playing as well as they have all year long. I wouldn't be surprised if this defense, though, tried to get after him early with a little extra pressure. If he can handle that, he can have another big game, though. On first down, it's Tannehill. This should be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Fletcher Cox, the former Mississippi State Bulldog, ringing the cowbell there on the sack. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> and yeah, they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. And good pursuit yet again by the Chargers as they stuff him behind the line. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you put everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room for him. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. A good return there, 17 yards. And it'll be Charger football here 
as they take over. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive, and they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little I bit jumpy. Uh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went three and, and out. And now they have that opportunity. To... <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. Flushed out right. He'll run it. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And the Patriots have it. Think about it, Charles. This is not a quarterback that's used to running the football a lot, and that time he was loose with it, had it knocked free. He always has to think to himself that there's always going to be traffic around because of what you just said. Not that elusive, not going to get to the open field very often. Remember, he's not Lamar Jackson, not Michael Vick back in the day. Always has to protect the football because there's always going to be people around. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. That was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quicker. Now a quick slam as the throw is complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the gun on third down, Tannehill will get this underneath to Jacobs. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Three yards. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. Is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. And the Charger defense stands tall, and they get the football back. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter, and it didn't work out. Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so genius. In this case, not so genius, but I do admire that he went for it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. On first down, Carson. The stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And there's the first tackle of the game for Carl Joseph. He's one of those safeties that you can utilize in any way you want. But I will have to say, I think the number one thing he does best is tackle. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Here's Watson. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. No move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. They will indeed snap it to Watson, eluding the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. 
is caught. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. We're scoreless after one. From the two, here's first and goal. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Taking it in for two yards out as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, we had the scoreless first quarter of play. We sure didn't have to wait long into the second quarter to get some action on the scoreboard. So was the first quarter a feeling out process? I mean, that was an interesting quarter, wasn't it? Because we had some action. We had some good play. Just didn't have any points. So now it's game on. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And the Chargers grab the 7-0 lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. will kick it away. This taken in about four yards deep. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. It's a gain of five, and it's a second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Here's Tannehill, and this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Charles over the middle of the field and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw or maybe the ball's tipped or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. They'll run on first down. It's Carson. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Houston on the stop. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw completion. A pass 
Gets underneath for Carson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Three yards the game there, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, it's Carson. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And he will score. Touchdown, Allen. Touchdown run, and the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Hopkins with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. 14, Patriots nothing. Dustin Hopkins sets the kickoff. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's throwing one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating? The guys who just gave up that play. Here's Jacobs from the gun. A very tough run, but for a pretty short gain out near the 32. Tackle made there by Eric Rowe. At the 31. Only four yards on that gain, but you know, a lot of people would say that's like getting nine in normal circumstances since this was first and five. Yeah, now your playbook's wide open here, second and very short. Yeah, I still don't think that you can count it in the stats that way at contract time. No, no, it still goes down as four, not okay. nine. <laughs> They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they're just trying to get some momentum going. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Brings up second and four. At the they run it with Jacobs. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Just six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Earlier this half, you were wondering how the defense was going to handle him defensively. Were they going to bottle him up at different levels, so to speak, is what you said. What have you seen so far? Well, I think they've been absolutely terrific because it feels like on every play, if we were watching this in the film room, when they clicked off the film or stopped it, you would see 11 shirts of that same color right there in the frame trying to tackle it. That's what you're looking for. We remind you, as we've done all year, that coming up at halftime, we will visit with Jonathan Coachman standing by in Orlando. He'll let you know what's going on here on a very eventful divisional round weekend. And that is incomplete here. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job here to force an incompletion. He's got his man. It's Williams. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 31-yard line. Just three catches in the wild card victory for him a week ago, and now he's got his first here, and it's good for a first down. Tannehill throwing again. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Getting the 
sack, the big D tackle, Geno Atkins. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Fletcher Cox picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And the pressure gets to him again. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Jordan Berry now. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. And he spins through. a first and 10 now down inside the 20. To throw is Watson. Flush to his right. And yeah, he's going to keep it here. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. To throw again on second down. Watson. That's complete. Right around the eight. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds. Right around the seven. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. Here's first and goal, and gosh, points here. A chance maybe to put this thing away before halftime. A shotgun snap for Watson. Buying time to... This is going to be a Charger touchdown. Deshaun Watson in the final seconds of the first half. And the Chargers are going to add on to their lead. Boy, so if you are scoring at home, Charles, and God bless you if you are, but that's now three drives and three touchdowns. So in a baseball game, wouldn't that wreak havoc on your scorecard? Yes. I mean, with all the action that's happening now, how they got here, whatever cliche you want to bring into it, they're locked into a groove, they're clicking on all cylinders. Bottom line, they're piling up the points. Dustin Hopkins set to kick off. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. And this carries into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Nine seconds to play, likely the final snap of the first half as it's first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And it's a run to the over. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. The final shot here before the break. Tannehill, he'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So it's on to halftime in this AFC Divisional Round matchup. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. This the first of four Divisional Round matchups coming up this weekend. We'll get back out to you guys in just a moment. But first, let's take a look ahead to tomorrow's up. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. Dustin Hopkins set to kick off. Winner go home. That's the name of the game. And we're back underway with the second half of this AFC Divisional round. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. So here they come. The road team now getting the football first to start this third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Complete to Michael Pittman. A seven-yard pickup. 
Brings up second. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, it's almost a tendency breaker. On first down, they go with Jacobs again. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Tannehill. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective. It would have stopped him before he get a good head of steam going. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 16-yard line. Now we'll look at the Chargers' offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Chris Carson. For the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. Apparently, the week off hasn't hurt him one bit. Thousand-yard rush in the regular season, got his first touchdown here in the playoffs. Perhaps the week off energized him. A great article in the paper this morning, basically saying that they would not have won the division without him, and he's not their only piece. But I think that's a fair statement. It's easy to say it this way: he's their main guy. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28 0 now. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Dustin Hopkins set to kick off. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. He is taken in about four yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And now Ryan Tannehill becomes a focus of our player's spotlight, and he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. Holding offense. Come on, dog! So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Running is Jacobs, and he stopped immediately there. Josh Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Throwing on second and long. Tannehill, and he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It's a gain of five on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield 
And what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Danny Trevathan there to bring him down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 50, it's Tannehill. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Mike Williams, 50 yards. And the Patriots get a score closer. So, my man, another touchdown. They're looking like the number one seed that they earned throughout the year. Looking pretty dominant right now. We knew the road to the Super Bowl would run right through this stadium. Somebody's going to have to come in here and beat these guys. Good luck. I don't think it's happening this weekend. No, definitely not this weekend. And for anyone else out there, bring your game. Buyer, beware. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Campbell returning it. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. There is Campbell on the return. The Chargers take over first and 10 at their own 20. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and 10. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. He's on here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. That's good. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So from the 36 now, first and 10. This is Carson. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Carson, the ball carrier. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. One quarter remains for the right to advance to the AFC title game. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. First downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Draw play. This is Carson. Now Carson fumbles the football. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. A fumble on the play. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Now in front here on second down, and that's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 32-yard line. His first reception of the divisional round matchup, but it's good for a first down as well. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football, so now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A good pick 
up there, 21 yards. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Showed off the juke, but still corralled shy of the five at the six-yard line. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Now second and five, snap will come from the six. from the six to the five. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to... And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Paris Campbell, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. Justin Hopkins. So this, not a stat line that you'd expect to see two touchdowns for him now in the ball game, both coming on the ground. And while it may be unusual, it's obvious they found something that they like on offense and they can use against the defense, and I think they'll continue to go to it until they stop them. Dustin Hopkins set to kick off. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Take it in the end zone. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. At their own 25 The Patriot yard. offense now set to come back out onto the field. Their hopes of advancing past this divisional round, hanging by a thread, if that, as they begin here with a first and 10 on the wrong side of the scoreboard. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Good position to be in here, second and inches. Five-yard line. To throw his tail. You caused the play. You did it. I had to. From the midfield strike, they look to throw. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Zach back at about the 43-yard line. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. His throw incomplete. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. Third down here. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like in the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jacobs. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. On fourth down, Tannehill. And this is incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Chargers will get the football back in excellent field position. Well, they clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense, maybe, or just, hey, you can't have a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Hey, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. 
Big Eddie Goldman there on the tackle. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he's having a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. We've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Chargers, they're going to continue on in these playoffs as we say so long, everybody. Thanks for watching. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long, everybody.